Welcome to a special episode of Arbitration Life. I am Janet Brin, and my lovely co-host, Hannah Duval, is joining us from Paris today. Bonjour, Janet, and bonjour, bonjour everyone. It's an absolutely lovely afternoon here in Paris. And I've been here representing the BDIIC at the Paris Arbitration Week. Uh, at the top of the week, I participated in a remarkable session uh, where the topic was arbitration and how often can you help in the Caribbean? Um, this conference was uh, co hosted by uh, Timmy Peak, where I am today. And uh, this partnership between the media, IC, and Timmy Peak worked out just perfectly. Right, indeed. I saw we had Nicholas Burkow from Orger and our good friend Shan Greer of Spencer West and Angeline Welsh of Essex Court Chambers, along with our special guest today. This was obviously a remote session, which interestingly enough, I think fits so well with our upcoming theme for BBI Arbitration Week, A Little Big World, because here we are living in a time of COVID and businesses are continuing to do business regardless of where you are in the world. Yes, yes, absolutely, Jeanette. And through organization and, of course, some flexibility, the speakers were in BVI, UK. Uh, I, I think Sean was actually in St. Lucia at the time. Oh, she was? Um, oh, okay. And us in Paris were able to come together and to discuss our in the BVI. Yeah, that's so awesome. This, yeah, this was a really interesting topic uh, for the Paris Arbitration team. Uh, it was a very important discussion that will certainly continue during the BDA arbitration week that you mentioned. Uh, but first, let's get into a chat with Peter's guest. He was so gracious to partner with us uh, on this recent webinar. And I certainly look forward to him joining us for the BDA arbitration week. He's a partner at Timmy Peak, a leading dispute resolution business in Paris. He specializes in commercial litigation, international arbitration, and alternative dispute resolution. His experience encompasses energy tele telecommunications, insurance, mining, pharmaceuticals, and post MA finance. Uh, he also has full experience in post arbitration litigation, such uh, as setting aside action before French courts and enforcement of arbitral awards against sovereignty. In addition to being a lecturer on international arbitration at Sciences Po Paris, he's a member of the New York Bar and the Paris Bar. Please welcome Mr. Abed Benuti. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Hello, Janet. Hello. What a pleasure to meet you via this forum. It's a pleasure being with you here remotely in Paris, but with Hannah, uh, which I had, who I hadn't seen for a long time. So it was a pleasure meeting again and, and pleasure to, to be here with you, Janet. I followed your arbitration life, uh, who are always very interesting. So very happy to be part of it. Nice, thank you. You're welcome, let's get started. So I just mentioned the honor at the Peak, a leading dispute resolution boutique in Paris with absolutely beautiful offices. And so you regularly represent clients in domestic and international arbitration in both institutional and adult proceedings. You have acted as counsel in a large number of commercial litigation and in arbitration. So please tell me more about your work. Uh, well, I think you've summarized basically everything in your presentation, and I thank you for, for this very gracious presentation. Um, basically, and this is probably one of the specificities of Tenny Peak in Paris, we're the, a boutique firm focusing on dispute resolution, and the oldest boutique firm with one specificity is that we, our work encompasses all aspects of dispute resolution. Most of the firms, as of today, have uh, some departments doing litigation, some other departments doing arbitration, some maybe uh, other departments doing uh, uh, enforcement or, or setting aside actions. We have the specificity of all doing everything. Uh, and this is something which is uh, a key 
I think, advantage of our practice. We've all been trained as litigators in the first place, and we've also then discovered arbitration. And I believe those two aspects are very complementary to one another. So basically, as, as I said, and as you said, I've been doing uh, this job for the last 15 years, uh, a bit more now, uh, almost 20 years. Um, and, and we're acting both as counsel, as arbitrator in arbitration matters, and we're doing commercial litigation and arbitration as uh, counsel. Um, and we've all been doing that for quite some time now. My partners, Eric Pierre, Shafarak, and Sarah. Uh, and we handle a team of almost 20 lawyers uh, here in Paris. So it's, uh, it's a quite, quite a large team on the Parisian market do, doing uh, exclusively uh, dispute res resolution. Thank you so much. So Raphael, you also, so we've heard you regularly sit as an arbitrator. Could you please tell us about your first appointment and what do you think makes an arbitrator a good one? Sure, uh, Janet. Uh, it's quite a recent appointment, actually. My first appointment was in 2015, so six years ago only. Okay. And, and that was the year when I set up my own practice. So I was very fortunate and very lucky. Uh, to be appointed that this year as an arbitrator for the first time. Um, it was a, quite a big case on which I had been appointed. It was an ICC arbitration matter uh, with important stakes and, 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 an, and a state which, which was a party to the arbitration. So it's always a bit more sensitive when you have a state involved and when the, the amount of stake is quite high. Uh, but luckily for me, I was only a co-arbitrator appointed by a party and I, had the, I was very fortunate to sit with two very uh, prestigious uh, arbitrators, Pierre Dupré and Professor Sylvain Bollet, not to name them. Um, and that was an, a, a great experience for me, but mostly because I was co-arbitrator along with such generous, open-minded and great arbitrators with whom I learned a lot. Um, the, I think the next time when I was appointed sole arbitrator, I realized that it is a very uh, a hard task to be a sole arbitrator. You, you feel very lonely. And believe me, when I had the first procedural difficulties between the parties, I, I was sweating a lot. And I was once again, very happy to share my, my, my offices with uh, Eric Tenny, Pierre Pic, uh, Laurence Kiefer at the time who, who are very experienced arbitrators. And, and once again, I think it is very important to gain experience to be a good arbitrator. Responding to your second question, uh, it's you do not improvise yourself as a good arbitrator. I think you need to learn this this job, which is not the same as being a counsel. Uh, and it, it is true that most of the time people jump from being counsel to arbitrator, but it's not something that can be done that naturally. And this is really another job that you that you need to learn. You need to learn how to become a judge. And it, it requires a few and, and important qualities. Uh, and and it, as I think the first of those qualities means to be a very hard working uh, uh, arbitrator. You need to know your case ins and outs. You need to know everything about the case and you cannot just, you know, look very quickly at the case before, before going to, to, the, to the hearing. You also need to be impartial. Uh, whatever your position is, whether you're the chairman or whether you're a co-arbitrator, um, I think you also need to have some gravitas, you know, for the parties to follow you, to have the authority which is necessary for the parties to abide by the procedure that you're facing. Because most of the time, as you know, uh, you don't have any, any formal court, you don't have any formal rules, so it is for the tribunal to set the rules. It is for the tribunal to, to, to set the path that the parties will follow. And at the same time, it requires you to be able to listen to the party and to have the parties accept what you will convey as a message in order for you to be able, again, to drive the proceedings and for the parties to accept the result of the proceedings, whatever they are, whether they lose or whether they win. I think that's probably uh, the, the, the most important qualities for, uh, in my opinion, uh, to be a right. good arbitrator. Well, thank you for that. Great insight indeed. Thank you. 
in that sense. So you can see dual degree in French and Anglo-American law at the University of Nantes, Paris West Nantes, and also obtained a master's degree in LLM in American Legal Studies from Golden Gate University School of Law, as well as a postgraduate degree in international and private law and international trade law from the University of Paris in Sorbonne. Uh, would you say that you chose arbitration? Would you arbitrate? <laughs> well, if I can uh, respond to you frankly, uh, I chose arbitration when I went out of this Master II degree or this, this LM degree in, in Paris, but arbitration did not choose me uh, in the first place. Uh, uh, I remember interviewing at, at Latham and Watkins, where I, I started my career um, in, in, in 2002, and, and the partner who I met with told me, why do arbitration? I mean, do you want to spend the five coming years just in data rooms reviewing documents uh, and never arguing a case before before a court? And I said, no, no, I want to. I want to plead. I want to argue cases. He said, she said, well then, come and do litigation with me. And and I I followed her blindly. She became my mentor for for many years. And 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 she was right. I mean, in the first months of my uh, as an associate, I went in every corner of France to argue cases. Uh, and I loved it. Uh, and at some point after four or five years, uh, Laurent Gégère, who, who is now a partner at King's Bowling in Paris, uh, took me with him on, on the biggest case Latham was handling at the time, the biggest arbitration case, and told me, you know what, you and I, we're gonna handle this case. And <laughs> that was a huge case. We, we had 10 lawyers on the other side who were Laurent Gégère and myself doing everything, working night and day for two days, for, for two years in this case. And, and from that moment on, that was such a great experience. That was so great to be working on those cases that I convinced my former boss who was doing only litigation to split our time between litigation and arbitration. And was able uh, since then actually, so since probably 2005, 2006, to split my time between arbitration and, and litigation. So I think I chose originally arbitration, but. I, it came to me a bit by surprise uh, afterwards. Oh, that's beautiful. I didn't know this story. Thank you for sharing. Raphael, you lecture international arbitration at Science Po Paris. What is your favorite thing about teaching? So, you know, I, I started teaching uh, on the first year when I was an associate, so back in 2002. And, and actually, I think I was a pretty nasty student back at, uh, and in my days at university. I, I, I didn't listen much to my professors and I really, I was not very nice to them because I thought they didn't bring a lot of passion in, in what they were trying to teach us. And I also thought that it lacked a lot of practical experience. And, and, I've, and I've always thought to myself, if one day I can become a, a teacher, a professor, I will try to convey these things to, to the students, uh, passion and practical, practical experience. Uh, I'm not a, a PhD uh, uh, or a professor of law, but I can share some of my passion and some, uh, again, of my experience that I've, that I've uh, uh, um, gotten over the years to, to students. So that's what I've tried to convey to them. And that's what I hope I've been able to convey to them over the years. Well, I can definitely feel that because the whole time I've been listening to you from the beginning of this interview, I was saying to myself, I could feel this guy's passion about that he loves what he does. So I totally, totally, I totally see that. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> thank you, Jenny. So true. Now, Raphael, so you just mentioned before joining Tenny Peak in uh, 2017, you practiced for 10 years at Latham and Watkins, but you're also a partner at Las Vegas Le Bar, and you founded Raphael Canis Litigation and Arbitration, and you mentioned it earlier when you had your first appointment as arbitrator. I want to ask you, what is the most precious piece of advice that you ever received from I think I would say that the most precious piece of advice is work hard and, and be confident that what you've learned for those years allows you to do basically everything in the, 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 the business of litigation and arbitration. That's probably the two pieces of advice that I received from my former mentor at Latham. And I remember the day when I 
that statement, that's what she told me. She said, you've learned everything you need to learn. Now just work hard and, and be sure that you are a great lawyer and, and, and think about it every time you have a difficulty in your career. And that's probably what saved me several times of the years. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> so then what would you say what has been your biggest challenge or difficulty throughout your career? Uh, well, you know what? That's something I've, I've thought a lot about when I was younger. Um, I thought that being, without being a specialist in a, a specific area of law, you know, when you do litigation and arbitration, you are quite generalist in, in a sense. Okay. Because you, you don't learn, you know, when you do tax law or labor law or ITIP, you're, you're, you're very knowledgeable in, in one specific area of, of the law. Uh, when you're doing litigation, you can handle hundreds of cases without handling twice the same. And that's what happened to me in, in, in my career. And after 10 years, I, I was thinking to myself, am I an expert in anything? And, and I think that was really one of the challenges that I had to, to, to deal with before realizing that actually what we're, we became expert at is really handling disputes. And, right. and of course, arbitration law is, 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 a, is an area of law, but it's very procedural. So basically knowing the procedure, uh, uh, both the, the French civil procedure for French lawyer as I am, and mm -hmm. French or arbitration procedure rules is already a specialty. So that was one of my challenges when I was, when I was younger. Um, and apart from that, I would say that the biggest challenge that we, that we currently face in a boutique such as Tenetik is that we have to be uh, lawyers, we have to be managers, we have to be business developers, uh, communication people, and, and basically you have to have 10 hats at the same time. Right. And, and when you have a personal life, which I try to, to entertain as well, uh, it's not always easy to, to, to jungle with all, all these. <laughs> I get it, I totally get it. <laughs> Okay, now uh, it's Paris Arbitration Week. I know you sit on the board of the Paris Arbitration Week, and you also sit on the board of the Comité Français d'Arbitrage. Uh, could you please tell us more about these two roles? Sure. Um, so first, to start with the Paris Arbitration Week, because we are right in the middle of it, uh, I, I had the pleasure of being elected to the board uh, this year um, when the Paris Arbitration Week came to light as an association. Uh, it, it was set up as an association this year, and the idea of the founding members was to have new members elected every year and have three new members elected every year uh, to be part of this of this community of where nine people, nine lawyers or, or arbitration specialists who gather all the time. <laughs> We've been gathering every week for the last six months to, to get this week organized. And it has obviously been a huge challenge this year because we didn't really know how we would handle it, whether we would have it virtual, uh, hybrid, or in person. And I know you've been facing the same issue with the BBI Vision Week, so I'm sure you perfectly understand that. But it, it has been quite a challenge for, for those last six months. And at the same time, I had the best time of my life because I've been working with great people, um, intelligent, nice, uh, and and very highly motivated people who just wanted to offer the best to the, the lovely international crowd we are, we're welcoming in Paris for the last few days. And so far, we're, we're quite proud of the result because people seem super happy. Uh, we, we've had 86 events over the week. It's, it's never seen before in Paris um, and all of very, very high quality, particularly the one on the BVI, I, I was really good. <laughs> Really, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's great to be here and be able also to network and, and see the whole arbitration scene in Paris. You know what? We had totally forgotten, and, and Hannah was telling me how tired she was when she arrived, not because she went out very late yesterday night, but simply because we're so not used anymore to meet with people, to talk with people, to interact with so many people at the same time. And it, and yeah. it is exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like not used to it no, we, we had yeah, lost this. Yeah. this. yeah, it's surprising how much time has passed where we didn't get to do those things. So it's like 
we were just out of practice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she is. I think. <laughs> so wrap me up. If you ha if there were three words that you had to choose to best describe what do you what you do, sorry, what would those three words be? Uh, I think I would use passion again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being a bit repetitive, but I think you know passion is key. If you're not yeah. passionate about what you do. You cannot handle the number of hours, the, the stress, uh, the difficulties you, you, you do face in this, in this job. We, we we're having a, a, we, so I would say passion, hard work, I'm gonna say that. And, and three, I would say also pleasure because I mean, again, it goes with the passion and the hard work, but if you cannot do that with a bit of pleasure, you're doomed and, and yeah. you won't last long uh, because it, it is too hard of a job otherwise. Yeah, you have to love what you do. Yeah, yes. So now, because I'm curious to know, because you said earlier that you try to make time for for other life, for your the, your personal life and things that you might like to do. I would love to know a little bit about you. What do you love to do? A little birdie told me singing, but you can. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's true. I used to sing a lot and I actually, uh, it, it took me a long time to really choose my path between singing in musicals uh, or becoming a full-time lawyer. Uh, right. I even tried to accommodate both uh, during a few years, but but it was it was too hard to do, especially with my family life. I, I have three kids, soon four, uh, and, and I want to spend some time with my kids. I've always tried to spend time with my kid. And to spend time doing music, uh, right. uh, as I used to do a lot. Uh, unfortunately, life has limited my ability to 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 do music and to perform on on Parisian stages as I used to do at, at some point and around the world. Uh, uh, also, I had some opportunities uh, in Switzerland and in China as well to do to do some some tours and some musicals there. Um, but it's uh, at, during a long time, it was a frustration to me, you know, it, to, to be between those two uh, totally different paths with totally different world around me. Um, now I feel much more comfortable with that. I'm very happy as a lawyer. I'm very happy to sing with my family, with my friends, uh, during karaoke with my friends. And I, I hope next time we'll, we'll, we'll be able to have a karaoke in Paris or, or in Tortola, maybe. Jan. I'm saying, I'm... I, I... It's a it's a date. It's it's indeed a plan. Hannah, we're gonna get the karaoke machine and we're gonna set up. <laughs> <laughs> I am down. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Raphael, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us and you know let us into your world and educating us so much more on arbitration. I'm I'm I feel enriched. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Janet. Thank you, Hannah. See you soon. Definitely. It's a real pleasure to go to Ehrenhaus, working with warriors who are so passionate. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love the energy. It's Thank great. you. Thank you. Many thanks to Raphael Kaminsky for taking time out of his busy schedule to join us here on a special episode of Arbitration Life. For more Arbitration Life, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you for joining us once more on Arbitration Life. Mm -hmm.